Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT and we're looking at traps again. So in the previous video, we were looking at the Wave Echo Cave location that has all the fungus and everything else in there that was, yeah, it's a really, really weak encounter or chamber. Um, so we were working on putting some traps in and we did that. And the idea is good. I like the idea. Um, and we threw some traps in, but um, yeah, on reflection, um, they were rushed, they were botched together, do they work? Yes they do, but we can be better than that, can't we? We can do better than that. Um, so some slight regrets of uploading that video, I thought about taking it down, it's like, no, hang on a minute, this is an iterative process, so what can we do better? So I've had a big, big, I've had a play uh, with some of the trap stuff, um, and I think I've got ourselves a nicer way of doing stuff. So, uh, the thing we were looking at before was basically two lots of traps. One trap that effectively casts Stinking Cloud and the other trap that effectively does Poison Spray. Um, and that's what I have developed here. Now, big difference between what we did in the last video and threw those traps together and what we did when we put together, for example, this pit trap you can see on the left. When we did this pit trap, if I drag another one out, Boom. What we did is we used Monk's active tile triggers as with this image of the pit trap to actually do the detection. And we used a actor called pit trap to effectively do the attack. And we used token attacher to link those two things together. So we can, just like I did, drag out our prefab pit trap, slap it down wherever we like, and it brings in the images, the sounds, the traps, um, the triggers, everything all ready to go. And that's what we want to do. And that's not what I did in the last video. And I should have been doing it properly. Naughty, naughty clay golem. Uh, so in this video, I've already done some work in the background. So I want to show you how this works. So I have got a trap called Puffball and a trap called Stinking Cloud. Now, in order to do these, we do need Monk's active tile trigger. Uh, and we need token attacher, and we need something for our animations. JB2A is what I'm using for this. Um, so let me bring across the other screen here, which is Sorryman logged in as a player, so that we can see how this works. So Sorryman can walk around. He can't because we're paused. Let me unpause the game. <laughs> Uh, now Sorryman can walk around. Now we know there's a trap. I think it's here. We know there is a trap. So Sorryman can walk along here and has set off this trap. So what you didn't, possibly didn't see, was when he set that off, there was a sound effect. There was a green cloud animation that came up. And it has rolled his constitution saving throw for him. If we just pop back to the DMs one, uh, make this screen active, we can look on here. Um, we can see that uh, it, it's followed through. It hasn't, uh, he passed the constitution check, so it hasn't shown as particularly interesting. Okay, but we've got a little animation, we've got a sound effect, etc. Um, now, I haven't got this trap to pause the game because I want to do this repeatedly for you so that you can see what happens. Oh, he's passed it again. He's failed it this time. Now, he hasn't automatically taken damage because I haven't got the GM window active. Now I have, it's continuing to roll the dice. So it's just the fact that I'm logged in on the same machine as the GM and the player. So those little test things that we did we had a rolled a constitution saving throw which we made we rolled another one which we made uh, then we rolled another one where we rolled a two and we didn't and it automatically applied damage and you can see by his health bar that Sorryman has indeed taken that damage by walking over this trap thing so that's how we want it to work uh, normally I would also have that pause game added in there and it works really nicely um, so Sorryman can wander around um, it doesn't go off every time because that's how we wanted it set. Went off that time. Rolls that. 
does the damage. And doing it from the GM screen, you can see those dice rolls and everything happen much more smoothly um, than it does in the player screen. That's only because in, when I'm in the player screen, the GM screen is not active, so therefore it's not finishing those automations. But having them both active, in other words, if that was a player joining, it would be that smooth as well. So this works really, really well. Um, the other one, I'm going to clear this chat log. The other one is the stinking cloud trap. Now this works differently. So if Sorryman comes here, I want to do this from the player point of view for you. If Sorryman comes and sets this one off, you can see instantly I get the thing up that says stinking cloud need to make a constitution saving throw. On the GM screen in the chat, I have the same thing, but I also have the place measured template. So I can now go, well, there's my <laughs> stinking cloud. Okay, so I can place that template, the stinking cloud. What I do not know how to do, and I would like to be able to do, is when that goes off, instead of it giving me the option to place a measured template, it just places it for me automatically. And I don't know how to do that bit. Or even if you, I mean, I'm assuming you can do that bit, but I don't know how to do that bit. So I'm manually placing that template. Uh, but because it's stinking cloud, yes, Simon needs to make his saving throw um, and do all of the stuff that he needs to do. But any other players that are caught within this area, we can also be asking them to do that as well and run that very manually. But the triggering of the thing itself, whether it goes off or not, um, is all tied in. That's quite nice. But... Yeah, the one I want to focus on, let me uh, select this one and get rid of it. The one I want to focus on in this video is the more fully automated version, which is this one up here. So how do we do that? I'm going to clear my chat just to be that nice and tidy. I know, something I keep tidy. Right, let's have a look. First of all, this trap puffball, I've called it, drag it out over here. It consists of an actor, okay? So if I double click on it over here, we can see I've just got an image for the actor here. Um, it's got these things on it, but I'm not using those to do this. It's not casting that spell. Instead, what I'm doing is replicating the effects of that spell through the triggered tile rather than the actor making an attack. So really, the only reason I'm using the actor is so that I can bring all those things together and save it as a template. Okay, so what are my tiles? I've got two of them for this. So first of all, I've got this tile here, which is my active trigger tile. And then I've got this tile here, um, which is my animation tile. So let's look at this one first. Now, first thing to note that you may have already noted uh, is this is not on the floor. What I've done is for its image, I have gone through into the JB2A, into their library, generic, and I have found an animation I want to use. So remember with JB2A, as long as I can find the darn thing, um, I can go to the sequencer database, which shows me all of JB2A, uh, and I can look at these animations and go, oh, right, that's the animation I want to use so that I know what it's called. And then in here, I can navigate to that. I happen to be in generic smoke because that's what I found that I wanted to use for this. And I can select that animation. So all this tile does is run that animation. Now, the original one is white, but I've changed the tint color to green. So I now have green smoke, which is great. Um, and I've made this an overhead tile. The reason why I chose to do that is if I have it as a floor tile, if Sorryman is standing on the trap and taking up most of the tile, that animation is going to happen underneath him and he's going to hide a lot of it. By making it overhead tile means the animation plays over the top of any tokens and it's much easier to see. And because it's a, it's a play and then disappear, 
it only lasts literally a few seconds I don't need to worry about the fact that it's obscuring my scene in fact I want it to obscure my scene if only very briefly so I've selected the animation um, I've selected that I want this as an overhead tile in the animation sequence I haven't got it as looping and I haven't got it as autoplay uh, and under triggers and actions I've got nothing because this tiles only job is to play one out overhead animation so that's it um, now when I go to my tiles and I try to find that bigger tile I can't and the reason why over on the left here where we've got foreground layer now when I click that I can get it because it's it's not a floor tile so it's effectively on the ceiling rather than on the floor um, but I can double click it to get it there so going turn that off again I'm now on the ground now this tile is the one that's doing the business so the fact it's got a tint color doesn't matter because this is invisible uh, it doesn't matter what the image is for this because this tile stays invisible It's not overhead because we want it to be a floor trigger don't know why you need to worry about animations it's the triggers bit from monks active tile triggers that we actually care about so the setup for this is it's active tile yes when any token enters the tile remember there's lots of options I just want to enter the tile uh, I can say loud when paused um, but of course the player can't move anyway um, and I've set this to be percentage chance to trigger 50 percent half the time it will go off half the time it won't and it's to kind of generate that random chance of like if you're crossing a minefield doesn't mean you're going to set everything off every time it depends exactly where you put your feet that's how I was thinking of this with these fungi and things is yeah just because you tread, tread on a patch of fungi doesn't mean you've trod on one of the spore ones that are hidden amongst everything else so 50% chance of it going off now what happens if it does go off here's the action bit so the first thing I get it to do is to play my sound file which is my sound the next thing I want it to do is to show a tile now the tile I'm getting it to show is this tile with the animation okay then I'm going to get it to start the animation on that tile so let's just look at these if I open this up we're using the action play sound file and I've selected that puff noise plays it for everybody here I can adjust the volume restrict it to the scene um, prevent it from playing if it's already playing etc the show tile one literally is just show or hide I select that tile which is this bigger one uh, and I want it to show so remember this tile has only got the animation on it I want that to be showing and then this is the one that says actually I want to a tile animation I want to run I've selected that bigger tile again that has the animation on it and I've clicked start now remember on that bigger tile I did not have the video looping and I did not have it auto starting so this will start that animation but it won't auto loop it will just play it once and it will play it for everybody regardless those things are going to happen regardless it's then going to ask the triggering token and we've seen this before come here it's going to request a roll for the triggering token which is constitution saving throw and I made it 15 I can make it whatever I like and I've put in some flavored text I've deleted my log but it, it was in there your foot touches one of the small puff balls and you are instantly surrounded by a cloud of spores something like that um, public rolls bypass the dialogue go straight to actually rolling and if any target if any tokens fail we're going to carry on and we're going to carry on to hurting them <laughs> so we're hurting the triggering token now this is hurt heal if this value is positive like 1d12 it's going to heal them 1d12 so we need it to be negative and the double brackets are just making sure that that's working so it says here if you want to have a value the value if you want to have the value actually rolled you put it in those brackets okay but you could just put plus 10 so it automatically heal exactly 10 rather than the dice roll 
And again, we're going to make sure that's a public role and we're going to show those dice. So that's how that's working. Now, the only other thing that I would add into here is the game pause um, for reality. That's what I would have. But it's a bit awkward showing you when it keeps pausing. I have to keep jumping backwards and forwards. So that's how this works. And then da, 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 I have used the selecting our actor. I've used token attacher to then attach the floor tile that is the trigger and the animation tile that is the overhead tile. So they're both linked to this actor. Then what I can do over here is double click my trap here. I can go to my prototype token and I can assign this selected token and it will make sure that this template now behaves like this. So this is how we've got this trap working in this way. Okay, so I hope that is a bit clearer on how this works. There is one challenge with it. And it works brilliantly, and I'd definitely be using it. Let me get rid of that one. I'll get rid of this dart trap over here as well. So now I've got this as a template. I can drag these out. Yeah, Don't worry about the fact that you can see the cloud. Uh, I can drag several of these out. OK, lovely. Um, let's pop over to Simon and get him to wander around and have a look at those. Uh, don't worry, these will reset themselves in a moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, game's currently paused. <laughs> Unpause the game. So, okay, so if Soriman now wanders down, of course he set the first one off. He makes that. Watch the green puffs. Played here. Oh, and it's paused, of course, because the default one has got the pause on. Let me just uh, let me just unpause that again. Sorry, that's why I don't. That's why I took it off for the demo. Uh, next one is playing the animation at the top here. So this is one slight challenge that we have with using these as the uh, as a template, because the template is saying play it on that one. So we need to change that. Now that's really easy to do. I've put four of these out now. Let's uh, see if we can drag Soriman get Soriman out of the way. Uh, so I need to update these to make sure they are playing the animation in the correct place. Okay, this one works. So if I double click into this, not into the character, into the tile. So this is the trigger tile. And I go to the triggers and the actions where it's saying start, which saying show and then start animation. I want to edit this because it's not this tile. And this is the problem. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to select my foreground layer and I'm going to say actually it should be this bigger tile for that. Thank you very much. And then for my start animation, again, just updating that. Those two will work properly now. I can do the same for this one. I want the triggering tile into my triggers into the actions, the show tile, I want to make sure it's the upper one I'm showing and that I'm running the animation again on the upper one. Job done. And then again for the last one, to make sure we got the triggering token, a uh, triggering tile I should say, uh, back to triggers, actions, to show tile, I want to pick not this tile, this tile. Okay, job done. And again, start the animation on the correct tile. <laughs> so it's it's a bit of a pain that you have to do that. But let's face it, you're not going to be doing this on the fly. This is part of setup. Um, and they are now all correct. So I'm going to heal Soriman up a bit. Uh, and now we should be able to ask poor Soriman to walk across all of these traps. And you can see those animations are playing in the correct place. And you can also see that it's, it's stopping showing 
the animation. So that's how it should be. So again, on Soriman's screen for the actual player, once he finishes taking away, he can't see any of those traps. They're all hidden traps. It's only when you activate them, the only thing the player sees. So again, now we've updated all of those. Just a quick reminder. No, oh, it's paused. It's, it's so annoying. That's why I try to remember not to have pause when I'm demonstrating. So when he walks these, we get the animation. That's the only time he knows he's set one off. So this, for me, is a much, 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 much better way of doing those floor traps. And of course, we can do anything we like with it with regard to damage, to animations and things. Yes, I'm replicating a spell. Um, but actually this works nicer than getting it to cast the spell because this is automating all the damage and everything. So a uh, bit of a rambly one, but I hope that has shown you what we can do and hopefully that was quite clear enough. If you're trying to do this too and replicate, you absolutely can. Um, and that's what you need. Active tile triggers. So monks active tile triggers. You need um, sequencer. You need your animation so jb2a and you need token attacher and then you can do this too make whatever traps you want as deadly as you want whatever animations uh, replicate spells or just do your own thing easy peasy hope that's been useful you take care now